everyone. Welcome to another episode of TwoDebate.net. I am Sebastian, and I am one of your co-hosts. And the other co-host is whom? Is whom? Drum roll. I don't know. I don't come to the drum roll. Who is it? It's Dirk, who's just. Uh, were you, were you covering for not remembering my name? It felt like I was. I was trying to pronounce it, and I like because I stress because I stress. I don't know how to pronounce it properly, and like shit, I need to, I need to think of how to pronounce it correctly again. Just just say your name and say that you're one of the co-hosts. Please do me a favor. <laughs> my name. My name is Dirk. And, and you're one of the co-hosts. Yes, I'm one of the co-hosts, and the, I'm the one who you. I'm the one where people will vote for at the end of our debate. And that's exactly why you're going to lose because you're you're too aggressive in asking for people's votes. What uh -huh. is the motion today, Doug? Let's, let's go through the past debates and and uh, make a count how many times you asked them right in the beginning to vote for you. It's true that I love analysis. We should check that. Yeah, we Actually, should check that. The, the motion today is it's okay. It's okay to genetically engineer humans and. The flip of the coin has resulted in me defending the motion, so I'll be in favor of it, and you'll be against the motion. And I'll get started Wonderful. with my first two minutes. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. The reason why everyone should be okay to genetically engineer human beings is that way everyone will finally be able to be as smart, as handsome as me or you, right? Like it's, you know, you can choose. I think that's the single best argument I can come up with that finally people will, will, be, will become smart. But more seriously, I have other real arguments. The one of them is that it's going to happen anyway. And that's the thing. I think it's better that we talk about it, that we anticipate it, that we regulate it rather than waiting for some like crazy mad scientists in North Korea, starting experimenting and then discovering that, well, we've completely changed the human species uh, without any boundaries or a framework or international agreement. And we're already using medicine and enhancements in many ways. Like we, we now vaccinate most of the people, right? So we introduce external things so that we can resist to disease. In fact, the, the, the value of uh, genetically engineering human beings is also to treat the case of rare diseases so that children and Adults, if they do survive into adulthood, do not have to suffer the pain of these rare diseases. Uh, so if anything, it helps research. There are indications that genetically engineering human beings will help in fighting AIDS, in fighting Alzheimer. And my grandmother, this is the emotional ar argument, died from Alzheimer after 10 years of suffering from it. Cancer also, there are uh, indications that by uh, tweaking DNA, we'll be able to, to solve most of the cancers out there. In any case, genetically engineering human beings is called evolution. It's progress. What looked looks odd today will be the new normal tomorrow. In vitro fertilization, right? Yesterday looked a bit odd. Today, it's completely accepted. So I think this is just the, the reason why we have this debate today. It looks maybe politically incorrect to be in favor of genetically engineering human beings, but it's going to be the new normal tomorrow. Tomorrow may be the next century. Now... It's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument against the motion. Well, it's funny. We have a debate where we discuss whether or not it's okay to genetically engineer humans, but all the things you brought forward actually don't require genetic engineering. So, yes, we do enhance humans. Yes, you can argue that a simple running shoe is already an enhancement to humans. Of course, we give medicine, but we don't require genetic engineering for that. And the argument you were making, uh, like, uh, oh, it's happening anyway, so let's regulate it. it. You make it sound like whoever is in charge in North Korea would follow any regulations we could come up with. So uh, I, my argument would be the, the majority of the planet should maybe not do any engineering on humans simply because there is no middle ground. You have no way to say, yeah, it's okay up to this point and beyond that threshold, it becomes a problem. Because once you start it, it's actually something you cannot come back from. So why shouldn't we engineer humans to make a real point? And why am I against it? First off, we are a race that's not even capable of regulating markets. 
or having something like your pension uh, um, completely understood, let alone something as complex and complicated as genetics. It turned out in the past 10 years or so that genetics is not the end of the line. There is, there, apart from the human genome, there are plenty of other factors that make up human beings. So the, the, the effects of genetically engineering humans are not fully understood. For every, every disease you cure, you have a risk of introducing another disease that you might not have, have had on your radar before. And this is a massive risk. Not to speak of the society imbalance we introduce, because it's pretty clear that things like genetically engineering people will be something for the wealthy. And what you create is a, a good and damn good reason for the next wars that we have to come when people fight for the right to enhance themselves or their place in society and so on. So, no, it, I'm totally against that. It's not okay to genetically engineer humans. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. I, I have to concede that North Korea was not maybe the best example. Um, my point was rather that it's going to happen anyway. And uh, maybe not just in North Korea, just like in any country. So as much as possible, let's try to talk about it. And we may not be able to regulate it. You have a fair point. But my problem is that it is going to happen. Like you can put all the, you know, the, the theoretical debates and ethical debates in motion. Regardless, it is, go it is going to happen. And it's maybe not okay um, in theory, uh, but I want to show that you know we can tweak and maybe try to have the conversation and, and orient people to orientate people towards the fact that it is overall okay. And I want to insist on one aspect, which is the one you've mentioned: market regulation is not the same as health. Uh, in market regulation, nobody is dying uh, from not being able to regulate the market properly, at least not directly. Not being able to fix a rare disease that is di direct consequences on physical and mental pain on people directly, and we have. Uh, options to solve it. You said there's a risk of introducing new diseases. Well, it is true, right? Just like vaccination, there's always a risk or there's like secondary effect to medicine. Uh, there is always a risk indeed. The thing is, is it worth it overall? So you may say it's not worth it. I'm saying it's worth it. And you can ask the people who are suffering from these rare diseases, from cancer, from AIDS, from Alzheimer, from Parkinson's disease, ask them, you know, is it worth the risk? You know, if we told you we can introduce some slight modification to the DNA, which will help cure this, but there is a risk. There's never a you know, 100% guarantee. All it's getting better. I'm reading uh, uh, the documents on, on the topic, and it seems that we get slowly, slowly towards the detailed analysis of our DNA. Uh, but I can see it also at this point. There is always a risk, absolutely. Um, so it's a trade-off, as, as often. You said it's for the wealthy. Yes, it is going to be for the wealthy. It is true at the beginning, though. Over time, as you know, we have economies of scale, like every technological progress, like computers. Computers were initially for the wealthy in the 70s or the 80s, and then more gradually people had laptops, just like smartphones. Initially, it was just for the, uh, for the Western world, and now everyone from India to Indonesia has a smartphone. Uh, it may not be as fast as the, and, and trendy as the ones in the Western world, but costs are, are coming down for any progress that we see in technology. So your point is valid, but only for a certain point in, in time. And I want to I wanna highlight something else. To Back to my initial point about North Korea, uh, something I discovered, which I did not know of, is that usually when we think about you know, genetic man manipulation, we think of eugen eugenics, and we think about you know, Nazi Germany. And what I discovered is that uh, the United States is actually the first country to have in introduced uh, eugenics in the, at the end of the 19th century, well into the 20th century, until 1970, where they forced people to be sterilized if they were too handicapped. Right, so it's actually interesting to see that you know you may we may laugh at North Korea or or think that Nazi Germany was all evil, but actually even modern countries, even well into the 1970s, some of the states in the U.S. were practicing eugenics. So my concern here, or the point I'm trying to raise, is uh, it's it's far from a you know bad versus good or evil versus uh, a good um, uh, position here. It seems that everyone's playing with fire. And we need to talk and say, hey, why, why should we you know, accept the trade-off? And why it is okay overall to genetically engineer humans? And if anything, it's to solve all these diseases, which are affecting pretty much everyone at some point in their lives. Everyone. It's not just rare diseases. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear it. Okay. So, um, to clean that up, I'm not saying we should not genetically engineer anything. I'm saying it's not okay to engineer humans. That is an important distinction. Many of the diseases you cite actually can be fought with, yeah, genetics. 
but not necessarily with changing human beings. Because most changes in the genetic code of humans need to be made before you're, you're conceived. So you're basically making a choice between someone with, uh, who might be born with an Alzheimer's risk and with an unborn baby that you then have to have an abortion on or uh, maybe avoid uh, conceiving that baby. That in itself is an entire moral debate. I'm not going to go into that, uh, that field. But that alone actually puts a stop to the debate whether or not uh, genetics to humans is okay or not for many, many people. Now, your other argument that you made, um, technology is first for the wealthy. I would argue that introducing a smartphone didn't change what it means to be a human. It didn't change human nature. It didn't change how you look, how you behave, your chances um, to be be alive, um, to be healthy. Uh, ch making changes to the genetic code, very much so. Um, actually, what you do is you start a different race. And it's not a far stretch to assume that the Western world probably would be the, the wealthy part of the world that starts doing genetic engineering on humans first, if it's okay to do that on a broad scale, um, because they can afford it. And uh, it's not a it's not a far stretch to assume that this kind of development leads into a quote unquote race that feels superior to all the others. And no, we will not make it uh, less uh, less expensive and more affordable to the to the less worthy humans. Unfortunately, history teaches us a lesson here, and that's not only Nazi Germany. We keep teaching that lesson over and over and over again. It's just human nature. So creating somebody with a sincere and massive advantage over others has never led to a good example. Now to the third argument you're making, which basically, if I may uh, summarize, is it happens anyway. There are plenty of things that would happen anyway that we are not allowing. So there are, there, there are things like uh, there are taboos for reasons and there are things we punish for reasons. Of course, there will be uh, people that do it anyway. Of course, there will be rogue states doing it anyway. Doesn't mean that we need to find it okay. Doesn't mean that we need to allow it. Doesn't mean that we need to do it at a large scale. So to sum it up, genetic research, absolutely. Working with genetics to fight diseases, sure. Um, using our, our technology ability, uh, abilities to make the world a better place. Yes, changing what it means to be a human and changing humans in, in itself, in their biological core. Uh-uh, no. I, I really think um, this is something that crosses a line I rather do not cross. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. I will leave you with uh, two things to ponder. If we had a way by genetically engineering DNA, uh, which is redundant since genetics uh, implies DNA, to indeed cure most, if not all, of the disease, diseases out there, and again, AIDS, cancer, Alzheimer, Parkinson's disease, all the rare diseases, my stance is that it's worth it. It's okay to play with, with fire because it's, there's too much pain and too many diseases that require a cure. That's the first point. The second point I, wanna, I want you to think about is that not a single atom, not a single atom present in your body today was there five years ago. In fact, 98% of your body, of the atoms in your body are changed every year. Um, so who are we? If the body that you have today is not at all the same one that you had five years ago, then what, how do you define you know, the human body in itself, the consciousness? That's actually an interesting debate, which goes well beyond this aspect of uh, technology enhancement, but shows that anyway, the body's already replacing yourself um, in, in natural ways. So, of course, modifying the species is much, uh, a much bigger issue. But as I said in my first point, I think the trade-off is worth it. So it's okay to genetically engineer human beings. Dirk. My main argument really, and that is what makes me most uneasy about the idea of genetically engineering humans is it's pretty obvious that it will be a minority engineering what it means for the majority, what it means to be a human. So It's going to be a wealthy minority in the developed world dictating for everyone on this planet what it means biologically, society wise, and in every other aspect really what it means to have access to this technology, what it means in life to be part of the human condition. 
to experience the human condition. And this is, um, first and foremost, a moral argument. I'm not even discussing atoms or that it happens already that people engineer things. I really think we, as a human race, we should we should have a moral standard here and uh, restrict ourselves. That's it. <laughs> That's it. People will have to decide. Our listeners, please do vote. I think that's an interesting debate. Once again, I was surprised at how I had to think uh, about this debate and the arguments. So maybe we helped you think about uh, the concept and the moral consequences, the physical consequences. So please do vote uh, on todebate.net to choose a side if you are convinced by uh, Dirk's arguments or my arguments. Uh, if you have other arguments that we may not have considered, you can go to our website or to Facebook and add comments on the, on the topic. I'd be very curious to see what you think uh, of, this, uh, of this issue, which is going to happen anyway, right? And as you said, it's, a, it doesn't, it's not because it's just happening anyway that we can't actually think whether morally we should do it or not. Um, but this is, this is coming, right? So have an opinion. You know, think about the, the arguments and tell us if we missed anything here. Yeah. Um, I agree. I actually I like the topic a lot. I like the debate a lot. And uh, in the beginning, we were a little bit concerned that talking about genetic engineering in the in the in relation to humans may be one of these things where where there is a predisposition out of media and general discussion. So people have a prefactored picture in mind. So um, yeah, please, uh, you as your as our listener. Um, I would really love to, to hear your thoughts on it. Make yourself free of that predisposition and let us know what you really think. I also I also really, very much like to encourage um, the different channels that we have. It's, for my taste, a little bit quiet on these channels. So people are reluctant to debate with us. They listen to us, but they don't share. Let's try to have a sharing month, shall we? Where people share arguments on our webpage or on, on the Facebook page or Reddit or whatnot. Or if you if you don't feel comfortable, by the way, sharing public your opinion, you can email us privately. Right? We'll re, we'll, we'll keep my like, conversations uh, confidential. This is a fun project, so you know it's also also for us to be enlightened by new arguments. So if you feel uncomfortable, you can email us. What will be the email address for that? Mail at todebate.net. Mail at todebate.net. So if you feel uncomfortable sharing publicly, you can email us privately. Don't hesitate. Uh, we let, we encourage all opinions, and maybe we can. Use, use and aggregate um, various arguments in an anonymous, in an anonymous way. Uh, Absolutely. When, uh, when, uh, Would you love write, that. Or when you write the meaning list, uh, <laughs> sharing additional, because Dirk is the man in charge. Uh, I have to thank you for everything that you do, by the way. Oh, uh, my pleasure. I'm, I, I think more of myself, myself as your execution slave here. So, so you come, you come in here with your word. brilliant arguments and you I'm know, making you, it happen in the end that they are published. <laughs> you know what I'll do? I'll give you five stars on iTunes. That's a wonderful idea. Everybody should do that. Right? <laughs> what, exactly. Everything should do that. Wait, hey, why, do, why, do you, why don't you agree to the following um, uh, proposition I have? We should genetically modify people's DNA so they listen to our podcast and they rate us five stars. It's a tiny, tiny gene that we need to modify. <laughs> it's not much. What? Do you do you change your mind? Uh, do, no. Are you are you convinced? I didn't change my mind, but uh, you know, I, I'm tempted to make that count as an argument for me because you're basically what? proposing to change free will of people. Um, no, uh, through technology. it's not free will. It's a disease that people are not listening to us because uh, here's the problem. Got it. Then fake news, fake news spread. People do not change their minds, <laughs> right? They follow whatever you know the culture, religion, or parents have said what it is correct to think. With us. <laughs> People have free will. Exactly. That's exactly my point. See? Yeah, Do you finally agree with emotion? Yeah. Can totally. you say yes? Yeah? Yes, you said yes. <laughs> Thank you. We're done. Thank you very much for listening to us today. Stay tuned. We have another debate in just a week. So thank you very much for listening. And I guess the votes go for me. Yeah, thank of you, course. Or for me. We see. <laughs> bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. I'm never ready for you. You keep, <laughs> you keep surprising never, me. Never ready enough. <laughs>
Especially when I have to when I have to skip one one week, and I know that uh, you you spent another week just drilling deeper on the line of arguments that you already yeah. had. Usually, you this is what happens. Once we define a new a new uh, debate motion, I prepare. I have my little notepad, and I start like a new page. I have a new page, and I put the title, and I make sure that I put with them for or against. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and then, and then, and then, uh, most of the time, I would start jotting down my, my initial thoughts, like mm -hmm. my initial arguments, and then I would put a reminder the day before the recording to come back to it and complete it. And then on the day of the recording, a few hours before, I would I would then like review everything and prepare my opening intro, my intro, and my conclusion. Um, the conclusion I actually usually, usually don't prepare it. That that bothers me. But usually the intro, that's what I would try to prepare to make it like bang. Right from the beginning, like just just stun my opponent, right from the you know, right from the get go, so you have no chance. So like, so you tell me, and then you what do you tell me? Oh, you oh hey, this is this is a usual response. You tell me, I haven't heard any argument. Of course, I'm using my I'm using my emotional tactic. Of course, uh -huh. there's no argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I. I I learn you, man. I learn you. When in some <laughs> some distant dystopian future we meet on separate sides of a, a, a discussion and debate that really counts for something, then I'm ready for you. Because I usually expect an email from you two or three hours before the recording, telling me, "Oh, I'm sick today." Uh -huh, oh, uh -huh. my, my dog! My dog ate my homework. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know what, oh, I'm moving houses, Doug. You already moved houses three times this year. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly. This is exactly it. That's my style. <laughs> so I usually wait for your email three hours before I say, "Okay, I know. I know that's coming." Even the days when I feel a bit sick, I know I don't have to say anything. Because there's a 30 percent likelihood you're gonna you're gonna send me an email. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there are people in this debate. Some of us, some of us keep keep stating that they are in hospitals. That seemed to be a theme <laughs> the entire year so far. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now you show me your your tattoos on on the no. tattoos, <laughs> tattoos. It's fucking scars. Oh my god. <laughs> Unbelievable! We will post the photos. Yeah, have you been in a shooting or what was that? Like, exactly. Yeah. I've, I've been fighting for freedom <laughs> in Syria, <laughs> in Afghanistan, like three years ago. See, on the side. I keep advertising our our podcast when when anyone like starts challenging me on anything, whatever random discussions, not in interviews, but just in general. Like you usually debate with people like for random things. I say, you know what? I'm not going to debate with you. If you're interested, just go to the debate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not it's, following it's, your stupid arguments. I did that I've in 2D12. <laughs> Listen, the likelihood of, of people debating something we've probably already debated upon is very high. Right? It increases over time because we cover every single topic. Yeah. I just tell them, go to 2D24. <laughs> just listen. Yeah. You know, we take both sides, six minutes each side. It's very quick, anyway. So yeah, pick your favorite and then come little. back to me. And all the arguments that you, that we haven't made already, then I'm happy to talk <laughs> about it. Did you smoke something today, or no? Uh, I actually don't smoke. I don't drink any tea, coffee, yeah, no yeah. drugs, no but alcohol. I, I, I always suspect that if you do at some point take something, I probably know this. Exactly. That's exactly what I tell people when they say, "Why you not drink coffee?" I say, "Look at me. I'm really hyperactive. You really want me to drink coffee? Like you'd be like." I tell that to my team. But then they then they get it. Uh, so then they they're happy when I go through surgery, and I'm like, I can't actually <laughs> respond to emails for at least two or three hours when I'm like asleep.